Hello and welcome. I'm Mara Tue, and we're here with another episode of Mod Sauce on, well, let's just call it the Ferg Sauce server. I've I've got to find a better way for that, and I've still not thought of it in the past week. Oh, oh no, no 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 no. <laughs> I do not want that to happen again. Um, pro tip: Don't hold shift when you're trying to put a bucket into one of these tanks. They uh, spew their contents of the bucket on the ground. Right. Anyway, that's that's kind of loud. Um, anyway, before I uh, kill myself inadvertently, we are currently gathering some lava here. I just need some for my smeltery. Um, I had been using the uh, little uh, crucible furnace for mare culture, and while yes, it does work, it does not do alloys, and I am starting to need a little bit of alloy stuff. So what we're doing, we're just uh, there's a volcano that was to the north of me. We're just basically a uh, steel lava out of its main lava chute. And that should be okay for now. Oh, I messed that up. There we go. <laughs> it's the little things that don't matter. For now, I'm just going to block that up so that I uh, don't fall in there. So we have that. That's got a full tank. We're going to take our trusty crowbar here, which, by the way, is now my new favorite tool. This thing's awesome. You can attack with it. It does okay damage. Um, so right now this one's uh, plus five attack, so it's like an iron sword, I believe. Um, do I have an iron sword? Uh, no, iron sword would be plus six, because Railcraft Steel and Iron have the same attack. Steel is just lower enchantability, I believe, and higher durability. So it's it's pretty good. It's not quite iron, but it's uh, still useful. Um... You can use it to attack, you can enchant it with an effect, I believe it's called Wrecking, which acts like sharpness, but for a crowbar only, which is neat. Um, this has Destruction. Destruction will put it so that, well, actually, you know what, I'll just show you what Destruction does later. But it also acts as a wrench, so I can actually just shift right click with the crowbar. It is my favorite multi-tool. It is my new favorite, definitely. Um, anyway, let's go ahead and go up this uh, suspiciously placed ladder here and pay no attention to that mini-map. Oh, I hear you up there. I hear you. You get off. Okay. <laughs> I didn't want to rotate that. Okay, there's apparently an Enderman up here, so we gotta be careful. Uh, he's by the console, isn't he? Alright. Ship contains changes. Why does ship contain change? That's still there, right? Oh, it's because of the stupid uh, ladder. It fixed it. Okay. The yeah, trapdoor. All right. Welcome to my airship. You probably uh, figured it out already. Um, we had one of these guys over by my house. Let's actually pull up the map. We had one like right over here, right? Uh, what I went ahead and did is I commandeered this thing. I uh, literally I put a helm on it. Um, by default, if you put like a helm on one of these guys and try to sail it off, you're going to lose most, if not all, of the sail because it's not actually attached. I had to reinforce the corners with some extra wool and then later the uh, balloons. So this thing is totally attached, one solid piece of stuff. And, funnily enough, the uh, balloons that we have up here, that's all we actually need for this thing to fly. It's We're right at 40%, which is, I think, the cutoff to be able to fly. Our house is over here. Uh, the only downside to this is this is fairly slow. Um, I'm not sure if we have the... For this version of Balkans, there are, like, steam engines and stuff, but I don't think they actually work. If they did, that would be fantastic. However, I still love the ability to fly my little pirate ship wherever I want to go. And to top that off, as long as I'm facing the right direction... Um, let's see, where am I? Okay, let's uh, get down a little bit lower. That slime island is about... Oop, stop. Okay, down. Alright. Yeah, I do wish this was a little bit faster. 
However, this is still pretty awesome, and I'm uh, rather... <laughs> I, th I find it rather fun. Okay, so we are facing the wrong direction. We want to turn to face the volcano. All right. Okay, we're over the house. We're stopping. Okay, can't go forward anyway. Why can't we go for Oh, the island. Yeah, okay. We're going down. We can only go down so far. I don't have that much uh, space between my house and the island itself for the ship. However, we appear to be... We should be good where we are. Uh, we want to go ahead and align to the axis and uh, disassemble. <laughs> and just like that, my ship magically appears on the map. <laughs> Alright, let's come on down. Okay, so... I was originally going to use the op the open blocks rope ladders, but you don't get those guys back. So while they are awesome and they are so freaking useful, it's uh, it was carpenter's ladders are the only real thing I can use to get up and down. I was going to try scaffolding of some kind, but it turns out for most scaffolding, when you start to uh, retract the drawbridge, even though they extend properly when you retract them, the very bottom one breaks first, which causes the entire row of scaffolding to fall. Not too terribly useful. However, that right there, that's pretty freaking fun. Um, I still have the uh, ladders on the side from when it was an actual ship ship. As a matter of a fact, I can, I can fly this thing over to like an ocean and then land it in the ocean and then sail faster than it flies, which is still pretty neat. It's definitely very, very awesome fun to have. Go away, please. Oh, well, that's going to be free. Alright, so we just need to go downstairs. Um, I've not really done much around here. The oh, my door open. That's uh, crazy. I've not done much around here, really. The main thing that I've uh, been doing is just playing around with stuff. Um, see, we have my portal to the mining age here, a metallurgic infuser that I used to make steel. This thing was running off of redstone directly instead of any real power source. Um, I've also... Speaking of steel, I've gone crazy with Tinker Stools. I now have, this is an amethyst, slimy, uh, blue slime, and I believe obsidian binding pickaxe. So it's pretty much the only pickaxe I'll ever need. And then I also have a hammer right up here. Hammer. No, that's not going to show. All right, anyway, this thing is slimy again. It's got a um, slimy rod, a... Manulian hammerhead, a platinum plate, I believe that is, for the speed boost. Um, you know, I don't know what the other plate is. I think it is uh, amethyst. And then we're just basically loading it up on redstone and lapis and stuff. So it's a standard hammer, really. Um, I think if I were smart, I would have just done a lot of redstone and silk touch and then do processing elsewhere, but you can't go wrong with a hammer. And I've also broke down, like I said, I made a smeltery. It's very lovely, and it's got full. It's full of lead right now. Um, one of the fun things about this little pack is we don't have uh, thermal dynamics or anything, so for moving liquids, you have a few choices. And what I've decided to do, and I think I mentioned this last episode, is I want to try to defer to using buildcraft pipes wherever possible, mainly because I've not used them in quite a while, and they've really improved since the last time that I used them back at like 147 and I think before that like back in tech days no nah, I, I don't think I touched that but these guys are uh, definitely much much better plus there's the fact that these tanks will actually output into a pipe without needing any of that uh, extraction business so that makes them very useful so airships aside what I really wanted to do today is I want to look at a mod that I've really not used before I've seen it used quite a bit, and you've probably heard about it before. It's called Electrical Age. It's inside mod cells here. It's also one of the mods that are in main focus in Technopharmacraft. It's a uh, mod pack for Minecraft based around Terraformacraft. I've still got some fond memories and some nightmares of Terraformacraft, but it's actually come a long way since the last time I've played. 
and I'm uh, kind of curious to see what's going on. But anyway, I have a little room set up down here of... Oh, oh no. Left the lights off again. You don't, you don't want to leave the lights off. That's how you get mobs. We don't want mobs. Let's go ahead and hit that switch. Anyway, as I was saying, Electral Age. It is a tech mod, and it is fairly awesome. <laughs> Uh, right now, in this little room, I don't have much set up. This is just a little, tiny little workshop I have set up. I figure it looks pretty nice. We have the uh, metal walls, some basalt floor, concrete border. And I really couldn't think of anything. I wanted to do full concrete, to be honest. I didn't have it, though, but I think this actually looks really nice, especially if the jungle was slabs. Um, anyway, all these lights right here, these are from Electrical Age. They're all keyed together onto the same circuit, this one right here. So as long as this is getting power it will actually keep the lights on. And this has about, I think, a 32 block range for the uh, lamp supply right here. So it can go a fairly decent distance. The only problem is right now is I'm running this off of a single use battery. So once this battery is completely drained, which will be in approximately 20 minutes, uh, no more lights. So that's uh, bad. So we definitely need to get some kind of power in here. Um, this is where my noob is going to show. I really don't know that much about Electrical Age, so... <laughs> Um, what I'm going to try may or may not work. So right now I have two options for power generation, just looking at the stuff that I have. Uh, we have a turbine, which runs off of heat from a stone heat furnace. And then we also have a, where is it, a water turbine, which just runs off of water. Uh, first things first, we're going to go ahead and try the uh, water turbine, just because if it works the way I think it works, it'll be really easy, it'll be simple, and... Hopefully it'll stop me from uh, having to turn the lights off. I don't want to turn the lights off. <laughs> All right, let's see. So this does take a little bit of space to set up. So what we're going to do is put it down like that. At least we would put it down like that. Let's break this. OK, let's try. Okay, yeah, it helps to place stuff the right way. So it's got a uh, little turbine right here. Um, I don't know which way the water needs to flow, so if we can hide it under this little corner here, I'm all for that. All right, and it looks like we can, so that's good. Oh, hey, it even spit it up the top here. That's funny. I would break you, but I don't think I have any more of the smooth stuff to replace that with. Oh, I do. Okay, good. There we go. Alright, so that's going. It's making noise. I hope that's making power, but it's making noise. Um, let's see. So for what I have going right now, we have this guy. It is currently draining. I have another battery in my uh, chest over here, but it is actually pretty close to, if not already dead. It's at 5%. So there's very little juice left in this guy. Uh, what we're going to do, though, it's... Oh, I'm out of cables. Okay, so what I need, actually, is I need to get some rubber, and I need to make some more wires. Yes, I do. I need wires. Let's go ahead and put this chest... The chest crafting station down. Uh, I don't like it there. There we go. So the reason why this is... Uh, need more wires is because I can't connect that, that to anything, so that's uh, not useful. Alright. Yeah, so let's make a quick detour out of here. Uh, let's turn those off just for now. I don't want the mobs, but I don't have the power. And yes, I could torch everything up, but I, I really do like the way that thing looks. Uh, so we're going to make a quick detour up here. I have a ton, 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 ton... Did I mention I have a ton of, uh, rubber trees? Oh, yeah. I kind of went crazy planting these things. And you might be able to tell, we actually have people here right now. See, there's Furcraft, there's H.C. Cerise, and, uh, Sean W. Com. I have no idea how that's supposed to be pronounced, but I probably butchered it, so we're good. As long as I butcher everybody's names equally. Alright, so this should be more than enough rubber for now. Plus we get some uh, wood to use as fuel. You know 
only downside to rubber wood is that it can't make charcoal out of it. Huh. When did that change? I thought you smelt it into jungle wood. Or did you extract it into jungle wood? Yeah, fungal. Fungal wood. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Shapeless crafting bark into jungle wood. Precision sawmill. Mono infusion. Okay, I'm apparently crazy. So, okay, you can make charcoal out of it. That's good. Um, I'm not going to worry about replanting saplings just yet. I've got 16 on me now, and I still have more than enough trees there. All right, what we are going to do, though, just going to tap that in there and throw these guys in. Uh, what we're going to need is probably about a grand total of um, 18 wires. Let's see, this is set to copper still. Uh, one of the neat things I like about this, I figured out that you could actually use the uh, ingot caster from Mariculture with the smeltery. So I get four ingots at a time. And yes, I could use the uh, block caster from Tinker's Construct itself. I don't want to go through the extra crafting steps, so this is pretty nice. There we go. Uh, certain metals that does not work right with, and I think right now molten iron actually does not uh, solidify properly. That's been fixed to newer versions of Mariculture, but that does not actually exist yet for the purposes of uh, mod sauce. Come on, just two more. We can make do with two more. Um, I wonder if we need another ground. What's it take to make a grounding? It's just five copper. Should be okay. First things first, copper cable. Ground. That gets us a wire if I don't F it up. No. Okay. I'm apparently losing my mind. Oh, it's the ingots, it's not the cable. There we go. That's even quicker. Perfect. Okay, so we'll be going back down there with enough stuff to spare. Ah, I got junk on me. If anyone is here that has watched my other videos, you know exactly what's happening right now, and that is I'm being given junk overload. I am not by nature a terribly organized person, and this is just making it worse. <laughs> Alright. I still have the lumbar X on me, I don't need it, but we'll just take it. Alright, let's make sure that we're uh, safe to get them in here. Okay, we look good. I love that effect so much. It is worth turning off the lights just to see that. <coughs> Excuse me, just to see that happen. Alright, so we're going to keep this by itself for now until we can make sure that we can actually uh, charge a battery up. So this is a cost-oriented battery. This is the easiest to make battery. It's literally six lead and uh, two of the cables. You can upgrade it to a uh, capacity or a voltage. It's actually, no, that's not true. It can go to capacity, voltage, current, or life-oriented battery. And that should just be how long the battery itself actually lasts for this one, because eventually after discharging, recharging, and discharging again, the battery will die. Um, see, current will be how many uh, amperage and stuff it can supply. Voltage would be voltage, so this is for 200, and then the capacity is just raw storage. So it's very low voltage, but very high number of joules it will actually store. Um, these are all fairly cheap to make, considering. Let's see, what is current? 
Yeah. Yeah. It's all current. And it's thus cost for this one because it is the simplest, easiest to make, and it's pretty cheap. Alright, so we have this here. If we go ahead and put this down right there. Okay, so that's the negative terminal, and this is the positive terminal. Let's go ahead and turn this the other way around. I believe this is the way this works. I'm not honestly too terribly sure. Alright, so we have the positive terminal there. We have the wire coming off of the turbine. We are going to ground out the negative pin and then connect. Hopefully this does not explode because electrical age likes to explode. Oh, awesome, it's charging. It's charging very slowly, but it's charging. So it'll take a full about 40 minutes for this battery to charge up. And if you let it charge too long, it will overheat and then it will explode. <laughs> Uh, you can get over that by installing over-voltage protection and overheating protection, which are actually fairly cheap. Uh, the main problem I'm running into is I think I need silicon for that, and I don't have any. I have to silk touch the ore to get the ingots. Oh no, that's just copper and iron. Okay, never mind. And that's, uh... Okay. Yeah, that takes the cheap chip, which takes the silicon ingot. Okay. They are fairly cheap though, you get four of the uh, things, so it's it goes a pretty long way. It's actually going a, lot, a little bit quicker than I first thought. I could probably definitely, I, I could probably definitely, I could definitely get that to be a little bit more effective if I uh, were to get another turbine in on this. I have most of the materials to do so, I just need to be able to actually use this plate machine. Now, I don't think I have enough juice, well, 13 minutes, nee, no, I don't think I have enough juice on that, so what we're going to do for now, we're just going to go ahead and uh, disconnect the battery. Hello, grounding cable, there we go. And hook up, oh, please don't explode. <laughs> oh, I tell you, I tell you what, what we're going to do, we're going to put this thing back. <laughs> We're going to put it back uh, the right way. Okay, we're going to leave the ground there so there's a ground to the system. We're going to hook that up. Oh, please don't go boom. Alright, so it's going. It's not getting a lot of juice, and that's probably because of the fact that this thing over here is uh, charging up. Will this still work if I disconnect the battery? Please no boom. Please no boom. Oh, too high, too high, too high, too high. <laughs> uh, we don't want the power to be up to this. If that's if it's that high, there there really is a risk of things going bad. I wonder what would happen if I were to ground that. Tell you what, I, I didn't want to do that. We're just going to drive it off this one for now. So we're just going to go ahead and put it right over here and then connect through. Green? Okay, that's good. So what I need to do is I have some... Oh, it's actually in my person. I have some iron over here. We're just going to go ahead and throw it in here. Uh, this is going to compress the iron down into plates. The actual like mechanics of the block here look really neat, though. I think the textures have a... Uh, they're a little bit lacking. <laughs> I also personally don't think this thing should be spinning. I would like this better if it were just laying flat down here on the side of the plate to be pulled through. But like the turbine here, this looks pretty awesome, as does the battery itself. It's a fairly neat model. Uh, there are some other things in here, like the, uh, let's see, there's a relay in here, a low voltage relay. Check that out, right? And that's not even the awesome thing for this thing. See, it's normally open right now, so that is the... Oh, that was loud, and that freaked me out. <laughs> okay, so this is the normally... This is the open position. The relay is not actually uh, making contact. If you actually set it to normally uh, closed... Check that out. You can see this thing's now making contact. Uh, you can use this to control the current. So, like, this switch right here, this will stop current from flowing. But this takes manual interaction. With this, you can actually interface a uh, signal cable, which is this stuff right here, and then control it by a 
switch or if you will have some sort of like other kind of circuit that is being read off of the switch, you can read from that. Um, what sign do you connect on? You're on the bottom, aren't you? Let's put it up top here. Or are you on the side? You're on the side, of course you are. But anyway, you can see whenever I hit that, let's go ahead and get rid of the UI. The actual model for that relay changes, and that is that's just incredibly awesome. All right, and this thing's almost done making plates. Almost. Well, let's check something out real quick. I know there's like a multimeter you can make in this. Let's see, electrical age multimeter. It takes. Oh, I need a electrical probe chip. She needs a high voltage cable. I can do that. Yeah, let's go make a let's go make a multimeter so we can actually see some of the numbers to this. Uh, it's a thermal cable. So you're done, right? Good. Yeah, check it out. We're only down to about five minutes of battery time left now, so that's not so great. The good news is though, this is already up to uh, sixteen point five, so that's charging fairly well. Let's go make a multimeter. I'm not quite sure, honestly, how using electrical aid you're supposed to be doing power as the quote-unquote intended way. Um, using things like IC2 or whatnot, you can just literally put fuel into a uh, generator and it'll use it as it needs it. Uh, for this stuff, if you add too much heat to a generator or if you add too much fuel to it, it will eventually explode. Or the components that are being used to generate energy from the heat will reach the point of having too much heat and then either explode or melt or whatever. And it, it it can it can take regulation, and the it's just it's a it's a little it's a little involved. <laughs> I was wondering what I was standing there for. Not that one, that one. Okay, so that's high voltage. There we go. Okay, so I need redstone. right there at redstone and I also need uh, I need a glass pane I know I have one I thought I had a glass pane Apparently crazy, and I think I have glass when I don't have glass, in fact. So what we're going to do, we're going to make another set of glass panes. Okay, you get out of there for now. Okay, so that, surrounded by redstone, gets me a probe chip, which is going to go there, I believe, and then we have rubber, 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 pane, oh, wait, no. There we go, multimeter. So if we come on over here, we can go ahead and give this thing a right click. So it's 4.53 volts, current output is 1.61 amps. The uh, cable we have here is the uh, low voltage, which can do about 20 amps. So it's pretty good. Uh, this thing's also near dead. <laughs> Alright, over here, this is 49.2 volts, and it's just under an amp. It's uh, 725 milliamps. So it's charging ever so slowly. Uh, see what we can do about that. So we're going to go ahead, come over here, and we want to make a uh, water turbine. I believe it'll go like this. Water turbine. It's fantastical. Okay, what we do need to do though is move this. It's in the way. Is that enough water for that to flow? It is. All right. Is 
this have any kind of readings on it? 59 volt. Let's see, these are being run in. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> We're running out of power very quickly. Um... As awesome as an effect that is, that is very creepy. Oh, please don't explode. Alright, so that looks like that'll charge in about 10 minutes. So that's actually a good, good amount of stuff. Yeah, so it's 1.34 amps coming in now, so it is roughly double, so that's actually nice. Very, very nice. Oh, this is... <laughs> this is not good. Unfortunately, I think this is going to be lights out on this episode, though. Uh, with any luck, we'll have some more stuff from Electrical Age to show off next time. Um, I want to go ahead and thank you for watching this episode of Mod Sauce. If you have any questions or comments, as always, please feel free to leave a message in the section below. And I will see you all next week. Well, actually, it's not true. I'll probably see you all in another video that came out today, because this one's coming out way later than I intended. But totally irrelevant to the thing at hand. Anyway, have a good day.